Hi Capricorn, welcome to December and happy birthday. Um, this is Teresa from Tarot by T and I'm getting ready to do your December forecast or taroscope and I want to first call in some good energy for this reading and um, thank you also for liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for taking the time out to comment on some of the videos and um, for those of you who have ordered readings, I value your support. Thank you. And I've enjoyed working with all of you. So let's see what's coming up. We've got a full moon in Gemini on December 3rd and a new moon in Sagittarius, which falls in your 12th house. So your 6th and 12th houses are being activated this month. That's the house of work. Um, psychological blockages, um, spirituality. Um, the sixth is the house of work and health, pets. The twelfth is the house of um, things that are hidden from ourselves, our blind spots, how we self-sabotage, um, things that we need to release, clear out, psychological issues, the unconscious, unconscious patterns. So let's see what's going on with Capricorn. What does Capricorn need to know about love and relationships for the month of December? What does Capricorn need to know about love and relationships for the month of December? Okay, the Fool. The Ace of Pentacles, the King of Cups, the Empress, the King of Wands, the Knight of Cups, the Ten of Pentacles, the Five of Pentacles, the Two of Pentacles, and the Tower. Hmm, major change for December for Capricorn. Well, plus you have Pluto in your sign, so that's transforming you as it is. <laughs> um, so let's see what's going on here. You've got the full moon in Gemini happening in your sixth house. And um, it's activating your sixth and twelfth houses. So you're really going through some psychological change in December. Something's coming to a head maybe at work, or maybe you're realizing um, there could be a health issue too coming to culmination. You know, if you've been working on your health, um, and that could be physical or mental, you know, you're, you're waking up to um, what you need to do to help for self-improvement, both on the job and in your psychological makeup. Like what's been holding you back? Because the 12th house is like the house of um, in the, the ancient astrology, it would be the house of hidden enemies, but it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be enemies. It could just be the way we self-sabotage our psychological blocks. So you're going to be looking at that at this full moon. You're going to be saying, you know, where am I blocking myself? Where have I been sabotaging myself by my behavior, by my unconscious behavior? And how can I change that to have a more healthier um, outlook or a healthier way of interacting with colleagues at work? Um, and also in my life, in my relationships. And you have the Fool here. The Fool is a brand new beginning. You have an opportunity for a new beginning. And especially at the new moon in Sagittarius, which falls in your 12th house, you can release like your baggage uh, in December and you could start over. You could have a new start with the Fool. Now for some of you, it could mean a new career or a new job because you have the Ace of Pentacles here and the Fool. So the Ace of Pentacles is bringing opportunity and money and tangible success. So recognition, success, money, there could be a job offer that comes in December out of the blue because the new moon is connected with Uranus. And Uranus is, let's see where's Uranus in your chart. Uranus will be happening in the fourth house. So it's possible that you could get a job where you can work from home or something, some opportunities coming out coming up at the end of the month. Sudden opportunity. Um, 
the King of Cups is in your past. So this could be a relationship with someone who is very sensitive, very intuitive, very, um, keep, very secretive. Sometimes the King of Cups can keep his feelings hidden. So you could be involved with someone who really cares about you but hasn't really revealed that fact to you. Or they're very kind of shy or quiet and um, you don't even know that they like you, but they do. Um, and the Empress, the Empress is, you know, the card of home and family and motherhood. So you could have... Um, maybe you're like a mother to this person or you're nurturing to this person and he sees you as a mother um, because you're you know Capricorns are always take charge type of people um, so he or she and even if you're a male um, you you can um, you care much about your family and your children you um, Capricorns care family is everything to Capricorn so um, you could be You could be involved with someone that is hiding their... I, I, I don't know why I have this feeling that someone who's very sensitive, who could be a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, and um, they care about you, but they haven't made their feelings known. They keep their... They're very sensitive, very secretive. And then you have this King of Wands coming up in the future. And that's a person who is very outspoken, very, um, very different from the King of Cups. King of Wands is a leader. They're not afraid to take action. They're not afraid to speak their mind. They can be a little bit bossy at times. Um, but they have a good heart. And they really care about um, helping others. And they're a very good mentor. You know, they like to give out advice. They like to help people achieve their goals. So you could be dealing with someone who is helping you in some way, giving you advice. Um, so you could be... It could be that you're trying to decide between two people if you're not if you're not committed in a committed relationship if you're just dating there could be two people in your life um, if you're in a marriage you could have some sense of renewal because this knight of cups this is like a, a an offer or a proposal um, you could have a chance to have a new beginning or a new way of like turn over new leaves let's turn over a new leaf and start again it could be that you've lost contact with someone um, that you once very cared about and now they're coming back into the picture and they want to reestablish contact and they realize that they made a mistake leaving and they want to come back. Um, and you're going to have to decide, um, do I want to take this person back? I mean, basically, you're looking for financial security and you want someone who's, that you can depend on. You want to be in a relationship that is stable and that is financially secure. You're, you're needing financial support. And you could have that. I feel like that in a career situation, you're going to be offered a job that's going to bring you more financial security. There's going to be some opportunities to establish a, a secure home if you don't have that right now or make your household more secure. Um, you could also be dealing with someone in your environment who's going through a difficult time financially, who's having, um, going through a depression, feeling isolated, having a hard time making ends meet, and they may come to you for assistance. And you may, it could be a child, it could be a, 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 a romantic partner, or even a close friend, someone that you care about, um, that you may feel like you want to help. Because I feel like this person is just feeling alone and isolated, um, like they don't fit in anywhere. Um, and it could also be your own environment, maybe the current, the work that you, like whatever you're working now, you may feel that you're kind of isolated and you're not making enough money. And for some of you, you may be looking for new opportunities. And if that's the case, if you are looking for a new job, the potential is there. You have to have, um, find a whole new job, um, to get, to really improve your financial situation. So I feel like that's a possibility. And you might even be juggling two things with this Two of Pentacles here. You might be. So I'm seeing two scenarios. Um, for some of you, you might be juggling two romantic partners, trying to figure out which one you're going to wind up with. One may be from the past. Um, actually, they both could be from the past because they're both kings. 
they, they both, they're both people you know. It's not like somebody new, but you have an opportunity to create a new beginning with one of them. Like somebody from the past may come back and want to try again in some capacity. Maybe they felt like, um, I think the King of Wands is probably re re evaluating the past and um, remembering it with nostalgia. And you may hear from that king wanting to reconnect, wanting to come home in a sense. This is often the card of the prodigal son. You know, this person that, that went away and, you know, thought they knew it all. They had this new life they wanted to try out and then it didn't work out. And now they're alone and they're struggling and now they're realizing, you know, I didn't know what I had when I had it. And they may want to come back and um, reestablish contact. And you're going to have to decide whether you want to do that or not. For others, you're existing in a situation where you're doing, you're juggling a lot and you're trying to make ends meet and you're trying to make money. Uh, and you're pretending to be happier than you are. You're, you know, you're trying to keep it all together. Uh, but you're laughing on the outside and crying on the inside. You're not really telling people how you really feel. Um, and a part of you is just not happy. Um, with the tower, you are going to... You are ready to make some major changes in your life. You're ready to break free of an oppressive situation. So if you're in a relationship that's that's feeling very heavy, you may break out of it and decide to try something totally different, totally new. If you're in a career situation, um, the same thing. You may decide, I've had enough, and I just need to break free, and I need to do something different. Because you have this, this new energy here with the Fool and the Ace of Pentacles. Um, that's very lucrative. The Ace of Pentacles is like, you know, it's, the Fool is wanting to start over, wanting to wipe the slate clean, start over, turn on a new, turn over, a new leaf, start a new p chapter in your life. Um, but it, it will involve major change. So you're going to have to break down the structures that you have in place to take advantage of this new opportunity. So if you're in a job, you may have to move or you may have to disrupt your life in some way because tower energy is always kind of disruptive. You're like stirring up the dust, you know. You're in this, like, you know, you can't remain in your comfort zone anymore. You can't be on the comfortable couch. You have to take action that really changes things in a major way. So whether it's career or relationship, you have to stir up the dust to make progress. But you will, but it, but it, it promises a favorable outcome. <coughs> um, and this all could happen. You actually have time cards here. This could happen in a two-month time frame that you're going to be going through some major changes. There might be some opportunity that comes up. Um, that allows you to make change for the better. That brings you in more gr uh, greater financial um, security um, and maybe possibly a new job offer. But it's going to disrupt your life because you may have to move to take the offer. Or you may have to change something, um, make major changes to profit by this opportunity. Um, let's see where the new moon is. Uh, yeah, the new moon falls in your 12th house. So you're going to break... The 12th house is about clearing out and freeing yourself from psychological baggage. So you have an opportunity to heal from the past and release all those things that have been holding you back. And um, you are going to evaluate you know, the resources that are available to you and get yourself on the right path. Um, and that... It could bring changes to your home. You might have to move to take advantage of it. I feel like you might have to move or change locations to take advantage of this new opportunity. That um, it's going to disrupt your life a little bit. Even if it's a relationship, it could be a relationship with someone where you decide to, you know, purchase a house together in a different location. And so you're like changing everything, you know. Um, Whatever it is, though, the end result will be positive because the tower never takes away. The tower is good energy, even though people fear it at times because most people don't like change. But the tower is going to break down anything that's stale, that is outworn and useless in your life. So if you've been holding on to something that's just not working, but you're not, you know, you just didn't want to break out of your comfort zone, you didn't want to disrupt your life, the tower will come to say, look, enough is enough. 
<laughs> you got to change. Things have to change. You've had enough. And so it may sweep things away. But it's really preparing you for a new beginning in a better direction. And you've got that right here. Look at this Ten of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, the Fool. You have the talent and you have the ability to have... Um, you really need a stronger uh, connection, more intimacy in your life. You've been settling for too little, for too long. Um, and so this new energy, this this disruptive energy is actually going to be a breath of fresh air. I think that you're going to be happy once the dust settles. But, um, so you may have to choose a path. Um, I don't think you can do this juggling act much longer. At some point you're going to have to choose one thing over another, whether it's a relationship or a career path or whatever. Um, it's going to reach critical mass where you have to decide, okay, what do I want? What do I want to do? Um, but there are, but these are exciting changes and I know that change sometimes can be scary, but it, it keeps us alive. You know, it keeps you from becoming, you know, like a rat on a treadmill. You know, change is what brings life. It breathes a fresh breath of fresh air, brings like opens like opening the window and letting the, you know, new air flow in and get rid of the stagnant air. So that's coming in December for you. That can come. You can release a lot of garbage, <laughs> a lot of whatever's holding you back, whether it's psychological fears, psychological blockages, insecurities, whatever it is, the truth is going to come out. You're going to wake up to the truth and you're going to know what you need to let go of. And you're going to be excited with this new opportunity because it's going to bring fresh um, energy into your life. So you could start the new year on, an, on, a, on a more secure footing with more love in your life too, a new beginning. So um, hold on to that energy, Capricorn. You can do it. You're the, you're the goat. The goat can always climb to the top. You're not goats. You never keep a Capricorn down long. Capricorns do not like to be. Um, they're always climbing, always moving up, always moving forward. So I wish you much success in December, Capricorn, and um, security, wealth, love, um, and happy birthday. For those of you celebrating a birthday at the end of December. And I hope this reading was a help to you. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.